Welcome to Stan's 360 World. I'm your host, Stan Horiza. If this is your first 360 degree video, well, there's a lot to see. This video is recording in all directions right now. So if you're looking on your computer, you take your mouse and drag the video around and change their perspective. If you're watching on your cell phone, you can either take your finger and drag around, or you might even be able to pan around and look in all angles. Today, I am here at the Alviso Adobe Park in Milpitas, California. This park was dedicated in 2013, but this property goes back and has a lot of history on it. The building that you see behind me here is an adobe building built in 1835 originally by Jose Marie de Jesus Alviso. Jose originally built this as a one-story building, but him and his wife had nine children, so he expanded it to a second story. Now, adobe is clay, mud clay, and these walls are four feet thick, um, allowing the building to stay warm during the winter and cool during the summer. Not too sure how well the camera will pick this up, but they have set up this room here as a living room or sala uh, from the early days of the mission time frame um, and what this would have looked like. Jose was a businessman. He was also the accolade or mayor of San Jose at one point. And so he would have entertained um, people here at his house in his living room, playing cards, drinking brandy, um, drinking tea. The neat thing about this building is this is the only surviving Monterey style adobe building in the Bay Area. The Monterey style is a two-story building with a porch going around three sides of the building. And so this is a very special property to Milpitas. Now these lands have a long history. Uh, the original people that we can tell that lived on these lands were the Ohlone Indians. And we can figure out that they were start arriving in the area. Uh, we can date that back to about 2000 BC. And then during the mission period, um, you had Mission Santa Clara, which is now in Santa Clara, and Mission San Jose, which is in Fremont. Uh, and the connecting road uh, went about a league from here. And the Indians were uh, brought into the missions to convert them to Christianity and also as labor for the missions. Um, there were expeditions that came up through the Bay Area and the owner of this land, his grandparents and great-grandfather were on that expedition. Um, here you can see, I don't know how well it can pick it up from there, but this is the Rancho Milpitas that we're on, which goes to the, from the top of the hill here all the way, like I said, a league that way to the road, um, and actually the other side of the road to Penitencia Creek. At the corner of the property down there uh, that Jose was granted, um, was the corner of Main Street in Milpitas and uh, or Penitencia Creek and up what is now Calaveras because this was a stagecoach road that went through the hills out to Pleasanton and what is Main Street connected the two missions and was part of the El Camino Real system. These lands were originally disputed uh, early on because the er, the first petition for this land was um, placed by a gentleman, uh, Javier, uh, no, sorry, not Javier, uh, last name's Berryessa, you know, I just saw it here, um, but Berryessa had applied for these lands, and he had requested from the previous uh, mayor, or accolade of San Jose, for these lands. Well, Jose knew that the mayor could not grant the lands, it has to be the governor. So Jose applied to the governor for the lands and eventually that is the um, grant that was uh, patented was Jose's. Uh, and this is the patent here showing the land um, all the way up to the top of the hills and down to Penitencia Creek. This is a example of the lands. He had orchards, he had a few adobe buildings uh, these are the orchards here. He had wineries as well as a herd of cattle.
cattle. Um, I believe he had somewhere near 600 head. He also had 60 horses. Um, so this was a very thriving area. Um, and he did die early on um, after getting everything established here. And his wife remarried. That husband did uh, help divide up the property between the nine kids. Uh, but also there was a little bit of a problem. Down here along the creek and along the main road, there were a lot of squatters. And so they tried initially to get the squat squatters off the land, but then eventually uh, they sold off the property down there to the squatters and legitimized them. That is now what is downtown Milpitas, if there is such a thing, um, on Main Street. And we'll cover Main Street at a different time, especially St. John's Church, because I have a affinity for the history of that location. I'm going to cut through the property here a little bit to shorten the video. These are olive trees that uh, the residents planted here and were able to make olive oil here on the property. These saplings that you see here are, are, were planted in 2013 for the park. But these are apricots, uh, which is what was farmed here. And there is still one apricot orchard here in Milpitas. This water tower that you see here was especially important to the property because there is a river that goes down behind the property, but it is very dependent on rainfall. But when they dug down, they found out that there is an aquifer 75 feet below us here and so they were able to put in this water tower to pump up the water um, to be able to water the crops year round. During the harvest season, Milpitas's population would increase dramatically with transient workers that would come and work on the farms. And so the family would open up the bottom floor of this water tower as well as this barn here that they would normally keep their farm equipment in um, and they would allow the migrant workers to live here while they helped out on the land. Milpitas has a affinity for public art and so this is one of our public art installations uh, that shows the history of Milpitas. Uh, there's also some restrooms on the property, some nice benches and fire pits here as well. This spot here is the California sycamore tree. This sycamore tree is on the heritage tree program because this tree was probably, it's dated to somewhere around 1860. Um, it was either planted or had just grown at the time. Um, and so this is a very special sycamore tree to California. And so there's a lot of work that's been done in the area to preserve it and make sure that it stays healthy for a long time to come. Other things that are on this property are this shed here. Now this shed is similar to one that is just a couple blocks down from us in the uh, apricot farm. And you'll notice a rail tracks here at the front of the property, or front of the building. These would come out um, and they would load the apricots onto these carts, push the carts into the shed. And so in that way in here, they could cut the apricots in half and then put them on trays uh, with kind of a great uh, bottom on them, a netting almost bottom. And then they would push the carts through and there was a switching system here to switch from one side to the other of a shed that was here. Now the shed that was here uh, was a concrete type building and it had two bays that you kind of see here with this brickwork. So the apricots would be slid into these bays and then a fire would be lit with sulfur and the sulfur smoke would permeate the apricots to preserve them and they would smoke them for a time and then they would pull them back out on these rails through the shed um, back out to the property and they would lay them out on the ground to, de to dehydrate, to um, preserve them even more. And so this was 
something that was done back then to preserve the food, the apricots, so they could be eaten year round. The farm that continues to produce apricots here does it exactly the same way as they did here. And this is the park itself. It's a beautiful park if you're in Milpitas. Uh, it's a wonderful place to stop by. If you're biking through town, this is one of the rest stops because there is a restroom on the property and water here. Um, but one of my favorite little parks here in Milpitas that most people don't know about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, go ahead and view some of my other 360 videos, and you're always welcome to suggest places for me to uh, visit as well. Thanks so much, and continue to explore your world. Have a great day.